All right. So welcome everyone to virtual coffee break. How's everybody doing? Anybody do anything we can celebrate? Celebrate? Anything you've done to move your business forward? Any MTGs? Y'all ain't doing nothing. I got a new business partner this week. Um, first one in a while. So I was definitely very, very happy about it. Um, he's um, very interested in uh, focusing on the travel industry mm -hmm. and has got some interesting ideas about how to um, market his business and move it forward. So I'm definitely looking forward to working with him. He said he's going to, he wants to take a couple of days to look through the websites um, and get some more information. So I'll probably look at trying to onboard him uh, sometime this weekend, I did already send him the link to your YouTube video, uh, yeah. walking through all the IntelliTravel information. Uh, yeah. This is actually going to be the first time that I'm onboarding someone in quite some time. So I'm trying to wait until uh, Katrina comes back from her vacation to talk with her about some of the things I should make sure that I cover, but definitely excited about it. And I've got some more pokers in the fire. So I'm hoping about before the end of this week, I should have two or three more people joining on as well. Excellent, Samori. Congratulations. That's what's up. Felicia says she has one that will be signing up this weekend. Good job. Good job. Shamika? Well, um, we I did make the commitment this Monday to have four three-way calls on that Monday, but I only had two. So, But um, throughout the week, I've definitely had about eight three-way calls. I got somebody signing up this week and actually today. Um, Excellent. so I've been doing good. I say I've been following up and been working and actually been, um, holding myself to this calendar. So, um, I'm congratulating myself on that. That's good. That's good. So are you finding that when you do the work, you see the results? Absolutely. And it really doesn't have anything to do with people signing up. <laughs> um, it's really just doing ps3 and inviting building rapport and things like that so yeah it's i haven't really been focusing on of course you want new business partners but um really just actually being intentional and building rapport with people and knowing you know we having those real i can change your life conversations and not just travel so it's it's been like i've been working on me a little bit more too mm -hmm. so it's definitely been showing in you know doing the work <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Michelle, that's good. Yeah. Um, what we were talking about earlier, had a lot going on over the last couple of weeks. Um, have had some high hanging fruit signing on um, who have some large networks. So I've been really thrilled with all that. Um, love the conversation I had with family while I was out traveling. Um, just more getting you know, the, you, I, what they said, that agreement that Don Bradley always talks about having that conversation with your family mm -hmm. and just how they can really assist. Mm -hmm. um, with, you know, building up the organization, you know, of course, you know, every once in a while they would talk about the travel piece of it and I had to stay in the middle because I'm like, I can't, I don't care about travel right now. Um, but I've been really pleased the way things evolve. And so we've got a couple more signups. And just before I got on, one of the other team members was sharing that, um, you know, one of their prospects that we did a three-way the other day has committed to a, a date date and time, gave date and time and so on. So that's pretty much what we're um, waiting for right now. In a sense, we had a PB, uh, team PBR last night. We have another person who's indicating they're signing up. Um, so one, I love the fact that you know, the traction is happening on my side, but it's even like you said, it's almost like birth and the child when you start seeing your team doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. makes a difference. That's good. That's good. Uh, let me see. Felicia says she has one that will be signing up this weekend. That's awesome. Uh, Rochelle said, went back and follow up and should have someone for a presentation today. That's good. Stephanie has someone signing up on Saturday. Excellent. Excellent. Uh-huh. That's good. And Stephanie's daughter had her first sign up. So we're excited about that as well. Excellent. 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 And Sandra, you have not you have a follow up? Okay, good, 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 good. It, it, we just got to do the work. It's simple. Um, again, don't focus on the sign up. If if that's what you're um equating success with, you're missing the whole point. <laughs> it's not about the sign up. 
It's about finding people who have a need and showing them that there's an opportunity to fix that need. That's what it comes down to. Um, because we don't, again, we don't know what's going on in people's households or their bank accounts. So we cannot control the sign up. So all we can really do is expose as many people as we can as fast as we can. And when the time is right for them, uh, that is when they will sign up. I had another conversation um, with someone and I'm just gonna kind of reiterate this. Some of you, I, we got some new people on. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go over this again. And plus we're gonna um, be sharing this in a team group. But I had a one-on-one -on -one with someone um, yesterday and you know they said they were struggling with getting people to the three-way call. And so I said, okay, take me through your step-by-step. -step. And so from a leadership, from a coaching standpoint, and this is gonna help all of you, as you build your teams, you gotta know how to coach people, right? Some of us have never been a coach or a supervisor or, you know, where you were responsible. Let me see. Some of you have never been in a leadership role where you were responsible for someone's personal growth or helping them with their personal growth. Um, so this is something that's going to help everyone. But I had a one-on-one -on -one with someone. They were struggling with getting people to the three-way call. And they were trying to explain to me, I said, you know, tell me what exactly what you're doing. And they try to just kind of give me an overview of what they were doing. I said, no, 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 no. Because when people give you an overview, it doesn't give you enough information to make help them make the adjustment. I said, no, go to your messenger or whatever, find someone specific, and then take me through the conversation step by step by step. And I said, where you mess up, I'm going to stop you because that's where we're going to make the adjustment. So don't let people just kind of give you a summary of what they're doing because they're going to leave out the key information, if that makes sense. Um, so she was telling me that, like, for instance, there was a, a young lady and she um, she had been friends with her on Facebook and she reached out or the, the young lady said she was interested. I can't remember what it was, but she, she reached out to the young lady and said, um, you know, would you be open to taking a look at what I'm doing? I said, eh, right there. Right there is the mistake. Reaching out to someone and asking them to take a look at what you're doing. So then I had to have a, a conversation with her. And anybody want to share why, why I stopped her right at that point? Anybody know why? Why is it not a good idea to prospect somebody by saying or peaking somebody by saying, uh, you know, are you open to taking a look at what I'm doing? Felicia says she made it about her. Thank you, Felicia. She made it about her. Remember, nobody cares what you're doing or why you started this business. Nobody. Maybe your mama. That's about the only person that cares that you started a new travel business. Nobody cares. And so we have, I need you to always keep on your business hat, your business hat, your marketing hat. And if we take the, and this is the conversation I had with the young lady, um, let's take the 80-20 rule, right? Would you all agree, and you can type in the chat, would you all agree with the statement that whenever there's a group of people that are doing well, there's a group of people that are not doing well. Would y'all agree with that? And so right now, would you also agree that there are people that are really hurting and struggling right now? Struggling to keep up with their prescription drugs. Struggling to keep gas in the car, struggling to keep food on the table. There's someone's son who wants to play sports in school, but mom can't and dad cannot afford the fees. There's some parents right now who are stressed out because their child is graduating 
this month, next month, wants to go to college, didn't get a scholarship. And they're like, how are we going to make this happen? So at the end of the day, asking someone to take a look at what you're doing, why? Why should they? Right? So with that being said, would you agree with the statement then using the 80-20 rule, 20% 20 of the country is probably doing well, can afford to take the trips. They got the money to, to you know, they want to go on vacation, but they could do that. You know, travel's on their, it's on their radar. But then that means 80% of the country, travel is not on their radar. Money and bills and tuition and groceries, prescription drugs, that is on their radar. Would y'all agree with that? So then you can easily see how asking someone to take a look at what you're doing, are they open to taking a look at what you're doing, is not going to be an effective way to grow your business in the times that we're in right now. Because we've all agreed that the majority of the country is not doing well. There's only a small percentage of people that are doing well. So again, if you're leading with the travel conversation, you miss in. Because what you're doing is you're only going after the 20% and you're ignoring the 80%. And if you're looking to get to director, you want to secure the legacy for your family, you can't focus on the 20% that are into the the traveling you got to you 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 got to also go after the 80% that are struggling because you have an opportunity to help them so the question is why are we going after the 20% and totally ignoring the 80% and we know that's the bigger group of people Who wants to talk on that or share their point of view? Because today's session is going to help a lot of people who are stuck in their business. I'll come off mute. Um, yes. I typed in the chat that it didn't click with me on how to help those who don't travel or how to help those. I guess because if they're not traveling, I was had a block in my mind that they couldn't afford to pay $200 and, but I don't need to make that decision for them. I need to give them the opportunity to see if I can help them and let them make that decision. Right, right. But here's the thing. If someone loves to travel, they don't need us. You do not have to become an IntelliTravel business owner to be able to travel more. Guess what? The people who are able to travel they're on a trip right now <laughs> this is not that remember why do you start a travel agency to earn commission booking travel for other people it's a business you don't start a travel agency to be able to travel more if, if you want to travel more you just go on a trip you just book it and go you don't need us for that it's, this is a business opportunity. Why do people start a business? To make a profit. Why? Because they like money. And it's just strange to me how people will um, focus, especially when I, when I look at people's social media, when I look at people's social media, it's, it's funny to me how their social media is focusing on the one side of the business that only generates one stream of income and it totally ignore the side of the business that generates seven streams of income. It makes no sense, but I see people doing it all the time. And so if we're saying the majority, 80% of the country right now needs income, then why is all of our conversation leaning over here? 
to the side of the business that only generates one stream of income. And then on top of that, the commissions aren't paid until 45 to 60 days after the trip has been taken. When you could be also sharing this side of the business where they can have money in their account next week. LaShonda? That was actually um, kind of my, well, my question is really, I have 11 people on my team right now. And so far, I'm the only one that's building. So my question really was like, I do post things as um, like pertaining to the marketing side, but it's usually combined. Like, you know, you could get up to eight streams of income and things like that. But I just wanted to ask, like, do you have any suggestions as to, you know, peak posts that will attract more people? Because I want more builders on my team. So do you have any suggestions as to posts that I can um, peak posts that will attract more people that's looking to actually build? Yeah. So let me ask you a question, LaShonda. If you could create your ideal next business partner, what would you want that person to want so that they are building? I would want them to, well, for me, I know the reason why I'm building is for the legacy. So I will want them to see the value of the marketing side and all that it has to offer. Okay, so let's talk about that. Legacy. So do post talking about leaving a legacy. Is that one of the reasons why you started the business? The reason why I started was actually for travel. But then when I learned about, you know, the marketing side and all that it has to offer, that's what has me like glued in right now then do a post or go live and say that. Because okay. if you don't talk about how you started this business um, or that the reason why you're staying in this business is because it's giving you the opportunity to be able to leave a legacy for your family and why that's important to you, how are your Facebook community going to even know that you have an opportunity to leave a legacy? How are they supposed to know? How can you attract them if they don't even know it exists? Right? Like last year, I think it was one time last year, my son had uh, AB honor roll at school. And so, you know, my husband and I went, you know, and I'm taking pictures and stuff. And I reflected and, and created a post that basically said, I remember when I was working a job and I could not attend these types of things for my son. But because I said yes to starting a home-based travel business, $200 opportunity, it allowed me to get my time freedom back and secure a legacy so that now I can be here. Because I'm thinking about Anytime I do a post, it's to change the mindset of the people who have not joined yet. So I want to speak to that mom, that dad that is at work and here their son, their child is here getting an award and they can't be there to witness it. And so then you do a call to action at the end. If you would like to have the time freedom so that you can, you know, be there for your child as they grow up and see them get their awards and you know the school plays and go to the games, private message me for more information. Many of you are just overthinking this whole thing and you're looking for some, some way to finesse this business to trick people to looking at it and it's so unnecessary. There's people right now who don't have any meat in their refrigerator because they cannot afford it. Talk to them. Reach them through your social media. And I think part of the problem is we got too many people faking the funk on social media, acting like they're living this glamorous life and they are not. And so all of you thinking everybody's doing well, 
right? Because everybody's showing, oh, I'm here, I'm doing it. And it's all fake. And I'm going to prove to you it's fake. I'm going to prove it to you. Because some of you are guilty of doing it too. Some of you are, are talking about, oh, traveling the world and six figures and all that. But are you traveling the world? Are you making six figures? No. So you're, you're, you're trying to reach an audience that's not even at your level. Very rarely do you see me uh, talking about Orlando Moore, Natalie Graham, and Shedrick White, millionaire, millionaire, making six figures a month. It's a great accomplishment. Yes, when Planet Marketing announced it, I did a post, you know, to celebrate them. But the majority of my posts have nothing to do with making six figures a month because I'm not making six figures a month, nor is my network of people. Are your network of people making six figures a month? No. Are your network of people making six figures? No. Then stop talking about that. Because then now that you're 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 so far beyond what they can perceive can happen for them. For most people, or for a lot of people, it's an extra 500. Bring it back down to their level. This is what we talk about when we say meet people where they are. Now, you might have that network of people that are, you know, attorneys and doctors and, you know, executives or whatever. Okay, if that's your network, if that's the majority of the network of your people, then yeah, I can definitely see your conversation is going to be a little different. But I can tell you, me, even as a six-figure income earner, that is not my network of people that are following me on social media. It's the people that could use an extra $500 a month. They would like to make six figures, but they're not there yet. So again, another great post, go take a picture of the price of gas. Go to the gas station today, take a picture and do a post about that and let people know you have an opportunity that can help them generate some income where it doesn't matter how much the price of gas is. And the reason why I say that is I remember Mr. Bradley saying, this was like um, several months ago or whatever, when the gas prices first, first went really, really high. And he said, somebody had asked him, Man, what's the price of gas? and he was like, I don't even look at the price of gas. If I need gas, I just go and I get gas. I don't go driving around looking for the cheapest gas. That's, that's silly. So talk to people about getting to that point, partnering with you so that they don't feel like they need to drive around town looking for the cheapest gas. That's, that's most people. Does that help you, LaShonda, a little bit? It definitely helped me. This is Kim Sykes. Yes. Hey, Kim. <laughs> yes, it helped me a lot. Thank you. I will be doing a post today about that legacy. <laughs> right. Samori? Um, so I want to say definitely um, that helped me quite a bit. Um, I'm definitely one of those people who uh, I'm looking to build. That's what I'm focused on. And yet the majority of my social media is focused around travel because I just didn't have a good idea of how to present posts that I felt like, you know, people would be responsive to that are centered and focused around the marketing side of the business, even though that's what I'm focused on. So this dialogue definitely helps me quite a bit and, and really changes my mind around how I want to approach this. Um, but the, the comment I was going to make is even though from a social media standpoint, I focus on travel, what I have found to be beneficial in the uh, past couple of weeks is in my local neighborhood, trying to become more ingratiated in the entrepreneurship uh, community, trying to connect myself with more people who are looking specifically to earn money. Because as we all know, a lot of these other business ventures that they're doing requires quite a bit of capital. A lot of these people have dreams and aspirations of what they want to do, but they don't have enough money to do it. And so I can present this opportunity as a way for them to do entrepreneurship, build up some capital that then they can flip into other dreams 
dreams and goals um, that they have. And I feel like that's been a very effective way to engage in the conversation. And I'm really hopeful um, about what the, what these conversations will do to help grow my business. So just want to exactly. throw that out there. Exactly. And Samori, that, that's it right there. Entrepreneurs, networking with people who have an entrepreneurial mindset, because now you don't have to change their mindset. Because that, that's the biggest struggle with getting people to join is the people who don't have that entrepreneurial mindset. They got that, that employee mindset. And so we have to help them change that. But if you go after the people who already have that mindset, that's why I said go after the people who already have a side hustle. <laughs> they're doing, you know, they're do, the, the ladies that, oh, I started a lash business. Okay, you're doing lashes in your living room. I, good. <laughs> But how much money are you really making doing that? They got the entrepreneurial mindset. I love that. But you ain't making no real money. Not life-changing income. You're making supplemental income, which is wonderful. So commend them on that. But we talking about life-changing income. Okay, you, you doing hair at home. Great. They got the mindset of, I need to do something outside of a nine to five to bring some additional streams of income in, but you self-employed. What happens when you get arthritis and you can't do hair anymore? What happens when that uh, sciatica kicks in and you can't stand for eight hours to do hair? You don't eat. Talk to those people. So you got to find the people who got the right mindset because then you don't have to try to convince them. And let me be clear. And if you're taking notes, write this down. This is not a convincing business. Stop trying to convince people to see. This is not a begging business. Stop begging people to join the business. If you have to drag them to it, you will have to drag them through it. Who got that kind of time and energy? Nobody. And stop telling people that this will be really good for them. Ugh, that's the other one I hear a lot. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You've identified somebody that you know could benefit from this opportunity. But when you say this will be really good for you, it's patronizing. It's like you, they mama. You're not. You have to get them to see that it's good for them just by showing them the information. They will come to that conclusion on their own. But when you tell people this will be really good for you, it's like it's almost like you're telling them you don't know what's good for you, so I'm going to show you what's good for you. It's insulting to people when you say that. That's why a lot of people are That's why a lot of people are kind of turned off and they end up ghosting you. These are not your children. These are adults. We're here to help people. How would you feel if someone says, "Oh, you need to do this. This will be good for you." You're going to be like, "I'll I'll outside that." Right, Michelle? You you going to be like, "I'll decide that." You going to get a little you going to have a little attitude. Like, "Don't don't tell me what's good for me. Oh, you should be, you should do this to help your, no, that's not what we do. We need to ask permission if they're open to looking. Listen, I know you're working two jobs and to be honest, two jobs with two people, I'm sure you would rather be home with your family than doing the second job. I have something um, that, that you know, I thought of you and I have something for you to take a look at that might be able to help you. It may or may not be for you. So for those of you who struggle with always saying you should do this, I'll add into your conversation, it may or may not be for you. That'll fix that whole thing. Just say, listen, it may or may not be for you. But if you'd like, I can, you know, if you're open to it, I'll send you some information. You can look at it and decide for yourself. It has to be their idea or else they're going to come in and do nothing. Even if you do an amazing job at convincing them. I'm a great convincer. I could get an Eskimo to buy ice from me. I can. 
Because I can, I can say things that will make you feel stupid for not saying yes. But do I really want that? So then you sign up and then you cancel within 30 days because you got buyer's remorse. And then you don't even tell me you canceling because you're afraid I might convince you not to cancel because I already convinced you to join, right? So we're looking for the people that are hungry. We're looking for the people that are hungry and you do not have to ask a hungry person if they want to eat. They're just like, show me where the food is. I'm going to go get it. That's who you're looking for. It's the four aces out of the deck of the 52 cards. You're not looking for the 52. You just want the four aces that are in the deck of the 52 cards. Shamika? Oh, this is good. Uh, <laughs> I did want to go back to... Um where you were talking about the gas prices, mm -hmm. um, it actually reminded me of an ET video that we was watching, and he was like, he was talking about the gas prices. Somebody asked him like, "Man, you seen the you seen the prices of gas?" He said, "No, I don't, I don't look at the prices. I just go fill up. Um, you know, I don't I don't talk about the price of gas. That's a borrower's conversation. I'm I'm a lender. There you go. <laughs> so we got to think. We got to start thinking about lenders." And this whole conversation is just going within the theme of IMB with shifting our paradigm and watching what we think and watching what we say to ourselves. And so this is just all confirmation. Um, and a lot of these things I've, I've noticed in myself within this time and weeks and plugging in and actually doing the things and reading. Um, if you really want to be a leader, not only do you have to make the hard decisions, but taking on the harder task of actually following through with those decisions. Um, this um, this was just so good. Uh, that's, that was just my takeaway of all of this together. It's just like, you just like kind of summed it all up um, for us this week. So I appreciate that. It's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, Devoris, you said Mr. Bradley said it on Tuesday? Yeah, he said that on Tuesday about the gas. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's that's look, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, and then when when he said it the first time, it hit me in the face because I'm like, man, that was so stupid. Like, I done burnt gas driving around looking for cheaper gas. It ju it just doesn't make sense. It's so you know why? Because there's a scarcity mindset that drives people as opposed, as opposed to having an abundant mindset. That will change everything. If you can control your mind, you can control your money. It's all about mindset. The reasons why you're all ain't doing, some of you may not be doing what you're supposed to be doing, it's your mindset. It ain't the business because the compensation plan hasn't changed right? The product hasn't changed. It's it's your mindset and, and your attitude towards what you're doing or what needs to be done. You have to switch your mindset to abundance. I remember having, um, I flew out to Houston uh, to do a training uh, for uh, Mr. Powell's team. This was a couple of years ago. And he had asked me if I had gotten my ticket to Eagle Weekend. And I hadn't because I had just gotten the house. There were some expensive projects that I needed to get done with the house. And I'm like, and this is like the year before Eagle Weekend, right? So it's not even a year of Eagle Weekend. It's like the end of the year. Eagle Weekend's the next year. And I'm like, oh, I got this project that I'm doing with the house, whatever. And he said to me, you don't know where you're going to be next year this time. You're operating on your present instead of operating on your future. And it like hit me like he's absolutely right. I could be making $10,000 more by the time Eagle Weekend comes in and the money ain't even going to be an issue. But I was operating 
with that scarcity mindset that, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this house project and be able to afford Eagle Weekend. Remember, the book, Top 10 Distinctions Between Millionaires and the Middle Class by Keith Cameron Smith. I still sometimes get caught in that middle class mindset. It's not something that you could turn on and off like a light switch. It's something that you have to work on constantly. You got to, that's why you want to read the book so that you can catch yourself when you're operating with that middle class mindset. Rich people plan year to year. So I was operating on right now, I'm saving money for this business, this house project. So I'm not going to have the money for Eagle Weekend that's next year. Wrong way of thinking. Get the ticket. It'll all work out. You're going to be able to go. And you got a business that can help you get there. So work your business. Increase your numbers. And what I did, I bought the ticket and... So you got you to gotta plan for your future. You got to have uh, a rich, wealthy mindset where you're operating on where you're going and not where you are. Remember, wherever you focus, that's where your energy flows. So if you're focused on the lack that you have today, you're going to keep having lack. If you focus on the abundance of next year, next month, then that's where your energy is going to flow and abundance is just going to come to you. It's called the law of attraction. It's in the Bible. You got to act as if it already is. Does that make sense? Stephanie said, the more gas increases, the more my urgency to work my business. Yep. But again, this is how you market to those people. So I'm going to show my Facebook page to give you all some examples and follow people who have good social media pages so that you can get ideas. Because one thing about network marketing is it's about copy the right cat. It's the adult game of follow the leader. Constance? Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Yeah. It's been a minute. It's, it's been a while since I was able to come on here and talk and converse with you guys. Um, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna work backwards. I never looked at the price of gas because I still need the gas in my car. <laughs> it was four dollars. I didn't care. I just know how much it took to fill a tank, and that's what I was gonna do. Um, I got my Eagle Weekend ticket last year. Um, and my room is almost paid for. I just gotta get my flight. Um, I have purchased tickets for um, the Atlanta things for the um, seven-figure school, six-figure school, wasn't able to go, was be, was able to be a blessing to somebody else when the tickets were sold out and things like that. So I said, well, that's who it was for. Um, got my convention, re re rent, um, have my room and everything like that. If nobody goes, I'm still going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Now, my, I have a question. I'm going to play devil's advocate because it was like, go for the high hanging fruit. And I was go for the middle hanging fruit. People that need, um, there are people that don't have meat in their um, freezers and stuff like that. So when, and people that, you know, I'm, this is the people I'm running into because I know this business would help them. My thing is like helping them now, right? It's so, the hungry people. When we talk about, I want you to replace the word high hanging fruit for hungry people, because I think the word mm -hmm. high hanging fruit um, caused a lot of people to go after the wrong people. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm mm -hmm. referring to. There are people. There are people who, when you think high hanging fruit, you think of people who have like a ton of influence. Um, people, you know, maybe they're a celebrity. Or, or maybe they're, um, you know, they're making six figures or whatever. You're like, yeah, I'm going after those people because those people don't have $200 problems. Here's the problem with the celebrities. They're not hungry. I don't go for celebrities. I don't know now. 
But what I'm saying, people who have a lot of influence, sometimes they're not hungry. So I say go for the hungry people because the person who doesn't have meat in their fridge, they may be hungrier than the person that we consider a high hanging fruit person. Uh -huh. So you when, but I mean? so you might be yeah. thinking like, oh, I know, you know, my, my cousin is an attorney. That's high hanging fruit. Let me go for them. And if your, cousin is doing, if your cousin is doing very, very well in their practice or whatever, you know, they at the top of their game, they ain't gonna be they may not be hungry enough to do what they need to do in this business. But the person mm -hmm. who's got four kids struggling to keep meat in their refrigerator, they hungry. Okay, now I'm my high hanger feels like people that, you know, that are that have nice jobs and stuff like that. I'm not talking about high, like doctors and attorneys and stuff. I'm just talking about, you know, like middle class people. But anyway, but there's people that, like you're saying, that they have four kids and they're hungry. Their mindset, most of their mindset is like, well, if I spend this $200. Not all of them. That's not all of them. And, and, and the proof of the pudding, listen to the testimonies on the team Zoom on Tuesday night. Listen to the, the to the testimonies of the things that they went through, the struggles that they went through, but they pushed. Mm -hmm. It's the hungry people. They got to be hungry. You know, if, if you were born into poverty, it's not your fault. But if you die in poverty, that was a choice. And there mm -hmm. are some people, they want, something better but they don't know where to go because their circle of people are just as broke as them remember birds of a feather flock together if you hang around four broken uh -huh. people what they say you number five right but uh -huh. if you hang around four successful people you're going to become successful because you're going to learn from that group of people so that person who's struggling to keep meat in their house they just need to be exposed to some people who are doing better than them that can show them that there's a better way. Again, don't make decisions. To, I think people are missing out on some MTGs because they're prejudging people. They're making decisions before even having a conversation with that person to find out, are they hungry? That's why peaking is asking a question. Are you open to additional streams of income? If I could show you how to solve this problem, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? It's asking a question. Because when you ask that question, you basically say, are you hungry enough to change your situation? Yes or no? And to go to Lorraine's question, Lorraine asked, how do you go about peaking people who are already in MLM like Mary Kay or how do you peak by finding the need and need friends you've requested adding say 20 new friends a day? I love going after people who are already in another network marketing company because number one, it's showing me they have the right mindset or else they wouldn't be in network marketing to begin with. So we don't have to convince, they're not the ones that can say, oh, you in a pyramid? No, I'm in one too, right? <laughs> Y'all doing the same thing, right? So we like those people. But just because you're in network marketing doesn't mean that that business is meeting your financial needs. So for example, Lorraine, there are people who join Mary Kay because they love the product and they just want to be able to get the product discount. But that don't mean they're making money in Mary Kay. Right? Okay. I'm going to come up. You're breaking can, up. Um, so, uh, you're breaking up. Can you hear can't hear you. No, you're breaking up really bad. Hold on one second. Sorry. It's my house. It's always when can they say, me? hold on, that part comes in clear, right? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So last night, because every day I try to add like 20 new people from like suggestions or groups. Mm -hmm. And last night I sat and I was attempting to peek. Like, I don't know, it was like 20 people. Mm -hmm. And a, a few of them came back with, thank you, but no thanks. I'm already a Mary Kay rep. Mm -hmm. Or um, there was another one that 
said she has four online businesses and actually attempted to turn it around and recruit me to some kind of lead generating program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know what to say back other than, okay, thank you. If you know anybody looking to travel more, save more and earn more, please send them my way and show them these two videos. And I sent the peak ITA and peak rep. Mm -hmm. Great. You did the right thing with the videos. Um, what I do with people that are in other MLMs, number one, I pay them a compliment for being in network marketing. That's a big deal. And then I just ask them if they're open to additional streams of income outside of their business. Okay. So that's pretty, I mean, that's what I did initially prior to yeah, knowing. It, it's it. That's all we want to know. No matter what they're doing, I don't care if they're in Mary Kay. I don't care if they have an insurance business. They could own a bodega at the corner. They own a laundromat. They own a car detailing, a babysitting business. It doesn't matter what they do. The question is, are you open to looking at additional streams of income outside of what you currently do? Yes or no? Plain and simple. And if they say no, do you continue with sending the peak? I say, let, I do exactly what you <laughs> said, except I, I phrase it a little different. And I say to them, if at any point your current business is no longer meeting your financial needs, let's talk. Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. And then as far as like the new friend requests that you get, how do you peak them prior to knowing what they're needed. Add, add them to your list. You should have a running list that you're constantly adding people to. So anytime someone, um, you know, accepts your friend request, just add them to your list. Don't peak them right away. Let them see what you're doing for a little while. And what you should do is have a weekly goal of how many people you're going to peak. So let's say, you know, you work this business on a real part, part, part-time basis. Like literally you have less than 20 hours a week to put into your business. So a good goal for someone like that is, you know what? I'm going to peak 35 people a week. 35 people a week, which comes out to five people a day if you want to break it down by days. And so then what you go to, what you do, Lorraine, is you go, let's say Sunday night, you go to your list and you pull the next group of 35 and you say, these are the 35 people I'm going to peak this week. And then you peak them. But see, you're constantly adding to the list. You go out shopping, you meet somebody, add them to your list. You do a post on social media that gets a whole bunch of likes. Look at the people who liked it. If they're not already in the business, add them to the list. You ain't got to peak them right away. Just add them to the list. You go to a, a, a vendor event, a networking vendor event, right? Grab all the business cards. Add all those people to your list. At some point, because you're peaking 35 people a week, now that, that Mary Kay rep is going to come up in that next group of 35. And so... If you don't know what the need is, because th with your cold market, there's two things that when you meet a stranger, there's two things that come up. How do you make your money and how do you spend your time? That's how you get to know a stranger. And so once you find out what they do for a living, you know, make personalize the conversation. If I'm, if I'm at the airport and Kim is sitting next to me, we're on the same flight. And I'm, you know, having small talk with her, right? And I say, oh, where are you coming from? Oh, I'm coming from Chicago. Okay, business a pleasure. Oh, business, what, what, what do you do? Oh, I'm a real estate agent, da, 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 da. Oh, how long have you been in real estate? Oh, I've been doing real estate for five years. Do you do residential or commercial? Oh, I do commercial, you know. Oh, okay, how do you like that? Listen, are you keeping your options open to making additional streams of income outside of being a realtor? See, I don't need to know what her need is if I know what she's doing for a living. She's my cold market. It's the warm market people that you should know what their need is. These are your friends. These are your family. You know their kids. You know what they do for a living. You know how much money they make. You know what kind of car they live in. You know if they live in a house or an apartment. You know these things about them. 
those people, you're able to find the need, right? You know, someone has a kid that's graduating high school that wants to go to college. Hey, congrat congratulations. I see, you know, Michael's graduating uh, from high school this year. Um, does he have any plans to go to college? You know, what does he want to be or whatever? What's his focus going to be? Listen, if I could show you a way to earn some additional income from home to help pay cash for college, is that something you'd be open to taking a look at? And guess what they're going to say, Lorraine? Yes, of course. Because again, no one says no to something that's in their own best interest. So if you find that need, they will always say yes to looking at a way for them to meet that need. Does that make sense, Lorraine? Yes, it does. So one more question. So after you send the videos, after they say they're interested and you send it, you know, and I copied your um, note that you had on another video with, okay, here are two short videos, mm -hmm. four minutes and three minutes. Um, after looking at it, let me know if you have, if this is something you're interested in. Do you follow back or do you just Always wait follow up within 24 hours whether they follow up with you or not. Some people are gonna watch the video and follow up with you right away. We love those people. But if they don't, you make sure you have on your calendar to follow up with them within 24 hours. And just and don't ask them if they watch the video, just say, after having watched the videos, is this something you're interested in learning more about? If they say yes, you say, great. When are you available for a call? We could discuss, get your questions answered. Awesome, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, Shamika and then Samori. Um, I just wanted to kind of go back to what you were saying about, um, the high hanger fruit, mm -hmm. um, because I used to think the high hanger fruit was the people with the money and the cars and all of that good stuff. But I associate the high hanger fruit with the 14 pillars. Mm -hmm. They may not possess all 14 of those pillars, but you know, some of them may stand out more than the others. And Mr. Bradley, I always say that we should look for people. I, it's like four things he say. I want to get it right, but I believe it's like people who are poised, quick to make decisions and take actions. And it was something else. People who have a desire or passion to succeed or something like that. So that's the high hanging fruit um, to me. And I had to learn that with plugging in um, and talking to those high hanging fruit. Now, we do have some millionaires who, you know, millionaires are always looking to see how they can get another million. Mm -hmm. But then you got those those. um middle class people who do want something that don't know, you know, don't know where to turn to. Um, I've actually had to, to when I was smiling and dialing, um, uh, this girl, I've been following up with her for a while. And she said every time she prayed and something was going on and she prayed to God and said, please, Lord, help me. I need something different that I will follow up with her. Mm hmm <laughs> So yeah. this last time, she was like, I'm going to sign up this week. She was like, I don't know, God just, you know, and I hear that a lot. Um, But you have to talk to the people in order to know that. Exactly. So. Exactly. That's good. Samori? Two small questions. Um, First, as far as social media, um, besides yourself, are there is there anybody else who um you feel like does a really good job of marketing um, the business side that you feel like we should potentially be watching and emulating? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get into the social media real quick. And I know it's uh, going on one o'clock. This is probably going to go over. Um, if you're able to stay great, if not, don't worry. I'm recording this and I'm going to, um, I'm going to bring it up to my YouTube channel this session. Um, and I'll also have it posted in the team group, but let's go over to social media, some social media tips real quick. Um, because I want everyone to really work on their social media because as we go into momentum, you're going to pull a lot of people from social media if your social media looks up to par. So you have probably three seconds to help someone determine whether or not they're going to accept your friend request when you send it to them, right? Lorraine said she tries to, you know, friend request 20 people a day, which is wonderful, but as soon as they get her friend request, they're going to be like, who the hell is Lorraine? <laughs> right? So the first thing they're going to do is go to her social media to, to say, you know, is this someone I want to accept their friend request? Number one, is this a real account or is it a scam account? That's the first thing people are looking for. So you got to show from your social media that you have a, a, you're a real person and this isn't some fake account that someone's using to scam people. 
And it's very easy um, to determine that. The second thing is you got about three scrolls, one, two, three, for that person to decide whether or not they're gonna accept your friend request. They ain't gonna keep scrolling, 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 scrolling. People are busy. They, they're not gonna do all that. You got maybe three scrolls max, sometimes one scroll. And so with that one scroll, one to three scrolls, you want these people to know, number one, you are an entrepreneur. Plain and simple. You're an entrepreneur, you have a business opportunity and that you're looking for business partners. Too many times I go to people's Facebook page and they're and it's the, it's always the people who are saying, you know, I want to hit director um, or, you know, my team, all they want to do is book travel. Nobody wants to build. And I go and I see their cover page. And what is it? Palm trees and beaches. It's travel. So when your new friend that you sent a friend request come to your page, First thing they're going to say, oh, this person is a travel agent, but yet you want a builder. You want somebody who wants time, freedom, personal freedom, and financial freedom. Well, you're not going to get it. You're going to attract the people who want to travel, not necessarily the people who want to build. You got to have balance, right? So that's why I have this. Do I change this? Yep. When they when they roll out that $91,000 banner, 91,000 people, agents. I'm going to switch this to that for like a day or two, but then I go right back to this. I love Shamika's cover because it automatically shows me she's a boss chick. So quick question. You uh, mentioned putting up the banner and I've been told before um, that you want to avoid um, putting things up on your social media that actually have Planet Marketing on them because then people will just go to the Planet Marketing website or end up being connected to them in a different way as opposed to coming through you. Do you disagree with that? I disagree with that. That was appropriate in the beginning, mm -hmm. right? I joined Planet Marketing when they first, first launched, right? They weren't even a year old. So nobody knew what planet marketing was. We ain't had no type of real documentation. Real, you know, they're just, we were just starting off. And so, yes, I would never, ever post planet marketing or IntelliTravel um, because I wanted people to reach out to me to find out what it was that I was talking about. So I was just saying, hey, I got an opportunity. You can earn extra income, you know, in the travel industry, blah, 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 blah. Private message me for more information or Back then, I didn't know any better. I was telling people post dollar sign in the comments or something like that. Um, we don't do that anymore. We tell people to private message us because sharks like me will go and reach out to those people because I know that you're not following up with them fast enough, right? That's what sharks do. Um, but now, Samori, we seven years in. We documented. We got three millionaires. We got over 86 figure income earners. We book $1.63 billion in travel, right? Planet Market has paid out over $178 million in commissions. So there are people who over the last seven years have been peaked. But guess what? The person didn't follow up with them. And they weren't ready. Now they're ready. They don't remember who showed them the business. Or they see that that person is no longer in the business because according to their social media, it doesn't even show that they're even in the business anymore. And so guess what they're going to do on Facebook? Hashtag Planet Marketing. Hashtag IntelliTravel. To find somebody who's in the business because they want to sign up. But you don't have that in your comments. You don't, have, you don't use those hashtags. You don't have it in your bio. So guess what? You ain't going to come up in their search results. I've had many people join my team or find me because they did a search on Facebook. And I came up. I've had many people find me because they did a search on YouTube and I came up. 
and they've joined a partner with me because I came up in their search results. So imagine if I'm trying to be hidden and not let people know. So there was a time, Samori, when that was appropriate and that is when we first launched, but with all this documentation, no. Now we're going into momentum. Momentum is when everybody has now heard of Planet Marketing. They're ready to join but they're trying to decide who do they want to join with. You want to come up in those searches. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. Thank you. I did have um, one other question. Yeah. Um, how long, if, if you've taken someone through the uh, entire process, so they've watched the video, they've watched the Zoom, they've had a three-way, and they, and they say, you know what, it's just not for me right now. How long do you wait to follow up with that person again? Because I've been told that, you know, you don't consider that that prospect dead. You can you consider that, hey, because people's lives change, things change. So you should follow up at a later time and find out if maybe at a later time this opportunity is right for them. How long do you wait? You could you could just ask them, say, you know, is it okay if I follow up with you in, you know, two or three months to see if things change for you? And they uh -huh. most people will say, Yeah, that's fine. And you literally go to your cell phone calendar, go three months from that date and, you know, put them in maybe for the month of May, you know, follow, uh, I'm sorry, the month of July, you know, follow up with Michelle, yeah. you know, see if things have changed or touch base with Michelle to see if, you know, situation has changed. Awesome. So okay. now she becomes part of your, at some point, your group of 35 for the week or 70 for the week. Now she's going to show up, you know, she's going to be part of that group that you um, go back to and touch base with. Sounds good. Thank you so right. much. You're welcome. The main thing is that your social, that they're friends with you on social media, because you're going to make sure your social media is on point. And when their situation changes, they're going to come back to you because they're going to see you rocking and rolling. You ain't miss a beat. Nor are you. The other thing that I do when they tell me that, go announce a new business partner. Show them like, okay, while you while this ain't for you right now, I'm still enrolling people. People are still joining my company, whether you enroll the person or not, right? On my team, and you are a part of my team, Samori, it's understood, right? If you enroll a new business partner, that's our new business partner. So I'm going to shout out that new business partner. If, right, you enroll someone, Samori, especially if it's a male, I'm going to say congratulations to our newest business partner, Michael Smith. Michael Smith, retired army, da, 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 hungry, but whatever his bio is. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna do a call to action. Private message me for more information about this opportunity or click this link to schedule an appointment with me for more opportunity, you know, for more information. I had somebody come into my inbox and was, why you put my... <laughs> Why did you post my business partner on your Facebook page? I was like, I said, because they joined the company. I didn't say it was my my business partner. I said, our new business partner, our sister in success. She blocked mm -hmm. me. Good. Keep it moving. I only do that within our team. Other teams may not do that. But with I teach that. I've been teaching that from day one. She was in our team. She it was she was on um in Team Lux. She was from from Team Lux in the yeah. group. I was like, so okay, someone well. who's not plugged into our training, but we do it all the time. Do not tag the person. Do not tag that new business partner. Do not tag them because now you're ruining their launch. Don't do that. So if you're not even friends with them, they're not even gonna know that you posted their thing but it doesn't matter and she's uh the girl was um in the business and she was so she was a friend i didn't tag the person that joined but she saw it because my page is public yeah she saw it. it's I like, to do i just that. laughed about it i just laughed I mean, about it okay so when natalie hit one hundred and forty thousand a month didn't everybody share the heck out of that but they didn't enroll her that's just silly it's called marketing we're not lying. We're shouting them out, right? When that one IntelliTravel agent got $95,000 commission, didn't everybody shout her out congratulating her? We're showing evidence. It's called marketing. We're not saying that's our, our 
agent that we enrolled? No, but we're shouting her out saying, congratulations, one of our agents just got a $95,000 commission. This is a great business opportunity. Right? People are making money in the travel industry. We got to share those successes. Show people that the company is growing. Sandra? Do you tag other groups? Like, I'm part of all these groups over the years with thousands of people in there. So when I do a post, um, I don't know if I should tag those groups or not. Like I belong to like, say my last name is Reagan. I belong to Reagan Nation with thousands of Reagans in the group. I don't know them all personally, but I want to reach them. Is that spamming them? Yeah, I would not post in a group like that to to recruit or anything. What you want to do, you have a, you do, I have a video. Let me go to my YouTube. This will help you. There's a video mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel called Your Network is Your Net Worth. Okay. This one right here. Your network is your net worth. How to build okay. your network on social media. So one right. of the things you want to do is do a picture of yourself um, where you are introducing yourself. Right? Hi, my name is Sandra uh, Reagan, right? Um, you know, living da 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 da. Um, what do you do for a living? You know, I help position people who want to earn extra income on the money-making side of the travel industry. I'm a grandmother. I'm a whatever. Right. Right. And then you're going to get some people who are going to say, oh, you know, welcome to the group. Congratulations. And then you're going to get somebody who says, what's the sexiest industry in the world? Somebody's going to be curious about what that is. Now right. that gives you an opportunity because they ask. Now you get to share. All right. I help, you know, I'm a travel business owner. I help people start their own home-based travel business to earn extra income. And you're going to get a lot of people who are going to say, I would like some information about, and you can ask them. If you want any more information, send me a friend request and private message me. Okay. And now you're bringing it to you as opposed to you spamming the group. Okay. I've also um, created my calend Calendly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so now I put that also at the bottom of my post. Good. Very good. So I'm trying to follow the blueprint of the leaders. Because even Mr. Scott last night, he was so great. Um, He talked about how he didn't think he would be a success. He didn't think that he would ever have money. But then he joined Planet Marketing and look at him now. So mm -hmm. that was a, a great testimony. Mm -hmm. from last night and then he talked about the 40 40 club or 40 40 40 club um and so I did a post on that yesterday you know are you are you ready to work 40 years for 40 hours a week 40 hours a week for 40 making years 40 per, making 40 percent of your pay right you know the hamster on the wheel and I put a hamster on the wheel excellent um, perfect Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, that's how you attract the people. Um, but to, to get back to the social media, um, look at Shaheem Grant. This is one of my directs. He's a director. Um, I recruited him from social media. His page is a great page to follow. You could tell he's been watching my social media videos, very coachable. But when you go to his page, there's a scream. No, it does not. He's an entrepreneur. When you just say you're a travel agent, you're putting yourself in a box. Don't put yourself in a box. Right? But it's always inspiring stuff that um, he posts. And again, it's all to change people's mindsets. Always positive. You owe it to yourself to become everything you've ever dreamed of, big. Announcing a new business partner. But what does he have on the bottom? The call to action. 
And I love this one. This is Millennial Alert. So he's letting them know the millennials are jumping on the bandwagon. Let's welcome the newest business partner, Mr. Chalk, and his words. Hi, my name, what is it? Adrian. And I'm 20 years of age. I currently work in the insurance industry and I reside in Raleigh, North Carolina. I started this journey because I'm honestly tired of my nine to five and ready to make money. Welcome to the team. We're excited to help you grow. Click this link for an appointment for more information. And it's going to go right to his calendar. Love that. So what he needs to do is everybody who's not already in the business needs to get added to his list. All right, I love to travel, so I made it my business. When you have memes, when you find memes that have good messages, create a me your own meme with your picture. Brand you, not the person who created the meme saying this. Brand yourself. Right, and then mix in some personal stuff, right? Family, but he's his sons, they're starting a juicing business because he got this brand new juicer and his sons are into it. So now they're starting a, a business. But he's talking about entrepreneurship with your children. You know how many people would love to be able to do that or never even thought about starting a business with their kids? Share some stuff that's going to make people laugh. Show that you have a personality. Love this message. Again, this would have been a great one for him to create his own meme with his image. But he does some of those things. His son ironing, teaching him how to iron. So it's not all business, business, business. There's, there's personal stuff too. So you want to mix it up. But just go to, um, you want to look at the, to answer your question, Samori, look at some of the director's pages. Not all of them are doing it right. But in general, you're looking for a balance. Uh, Michelle Proctor's page, excellent Facebook page. Guess where she learned it from? Let's go to Michelle's page. We're going to post that. <laughs> And so more we left. Oh, he left. All right. Well, he'll see the replay. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Showing she's she's an entrepreneur. It don't scream. I'm a travel agent. Book a cruise with me. No, no. Because now again, you would only be talking to the twenty percent and not the eighty percent. Don't ignore the eighty percent. Still talk to the twenty percent, but make your louder message to the eighty percent. Right. Are you looking to earn some extra income? Boom. Online calendar link. Make it easy for people to reach out to you. Right? But then now she's also working the travel side of the business, right? Having, you know, meeting, the food, is it good? What, what's going on? Show the time freedom. Show you out with people. This is the lifestyle of being a travel business owner. Not that you're booking travel, but that you, you want to send a message that because you are a travel business owner, you're bringing in multiple streams of income that allows you to live this ideal lifestyle, to design your ideal life. That is the message that your social media should be sending. You're a travel business owner. And because of that, you're able to bring in multiple streams of income that allow you to design your ideal life, whatever that is for you. Showing time with your family, being able to travel, being able to go to new places, right? Paying off debt. If you're making enough money to pay your cell phone bill, talk about that. That's way better than saying, you want to make money booking cruises? 
Yeah, I just did a post. I did, went live, I think it was yesterday. And I was always going live doing my hedges and how crazy my porch was looking because I needed to get I needed it to get fixed. So um yesterday I was I said, Oh yeah, y'all remember how I used to when I was like doing my hedges and everything, you said how raggedy my porch looked like was broke. And I told y'all I was going to have my business to help me get it fixed. Look at y'all, look, I got it fixed. This is what my business helped me do. It looks Perfect. Real pretty too. Like, Perfect. Good like, job. It was all Perfect. nice and everything. Mm-hmm. Good job. Shamika? Um, I kind of want to go back because we missed the comment that Lorna had um, when you talked about someone saying, um, come in, you know, check out what I'm doing and support me. Lorna said, um, Director Burke, I feel as though my family and the people who call me friends should be okay with taking a look at what I do just because we are friends, family, we should support each other. Lord knows I support their every dream and events. Yeah, they should, but people have life happening to them. And that's Skylar. Let me let her out. Maybe she got to go out. They should, but the truth is they may not. So give them more of a reason. Listen, think about this. Do you really want someone who looks at the business just as a favor to you? Or do you want someone to look at the business because they have a a strong desire to change their situation? I feel as though, Director Burke, if they look at the business and know what I'm doing, they can send people to me. Then say that. Because I... Then you need to say specifically... Um, listen, I'm building my business and the way it may or may not be for you, but I want you to take a look at it so that you can refer people to me. I'm just saying, don't do the, the, the bait and switch. That's where people messing up. They're doing the bait and switch. Like, oh, I want you to, you know, support me and come take a look at what I'm doing, but you're really trying to, uh, trick them into looking at it and saying, now see how this will work for you. If you're looking for referrals from your friends and family, then say that. Okay. Say what you want. And I think that's probably why I I keep saying people are overthinking things because y'all looking for a way to finesse your words instead of just being direct and saying what it is you want want or what you're looking for. There's no finessing. That, Lorna, what I just shared with you is how I approached my friends and family in the beginning because Mm -hmm. I I didn't know about how to find their needs and picking them with that. I didn't know. So I was messaging my my cousins and stuff saying, hey, not sure if you are aware, but I started a new um, travel business. I'm super excited about it. I'm expanding in the Chicago market. Who do you know that would be open to looking at ways to earn additional streams of income? That's how I went after my family and friends in the beginning. And some of them were like, I don't know anybody, but if I do, I'll refer them to you. And I said, no problem. Listen, send these two 40 second videos to them. If you know of anybody that's looking and referring to me. Um, And if you're planning a trip, let me book it. That's how I went after my friends and family. But again, I'm very specific. I'm saying I want referrals. Okay. I automatically assumed they weren't going to be interested. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm expanding in your city, your state. Who do you know that would be interested in some additional streams of income? And guess what? Some of them were like, well, I'm interested. I sent them the information. They didn't join. It's okay. But to say, you're my cousin, so you should come look at what I'm doing. That's that's an unrealistic expectation in my point. Yeah, I agree. They are your cousin. They should, but people have life happening to them right now. So let's not act like life is not happening to people. I don't want anybody taking a look at my business just because they're my friend or my family. I want them to take a look at my business because they feel that it may meet a need that they have. That's just me personal. Because we don't have a lot of time, y'all. There, I have this one business partner. They don't do this anymore. It's gotten a lot better. 
and they are the sweetest person ever. The kindest, most gentle, humble human being you ever want to meet would give you the shirt off their back. And they kept getting me on these three-way calls with people that weren't interested in the business. And these people told me they are not interested. They just got on because this person asked them. Because they didn't want to tell the person no, because this person is so nice, so sweet. So when the person says, hey, I want you to come take a look at what I'm doing, they were getting on because they didn't want to tell the person no. But I'm like, so I had to tell them like, stop getting me on the phone with people that are not interested in the business. I'm not here to convince them. If they are not seriously considering, considering this business opportunity as something that's going to help them, then don't waste my time or your time or their time. This person just said they only got on because you asked them to. So what? Okay, you could check off the box. You had a three-way call today. Is that what we're doing? No, that's not what we should be doing. Only get them on the phone with me if they're seriously considering this business. They have a need. They believe this business opportunity can help them, but they have some questions. So you got to, you have to, um, what's the word? Qualify your prospect, Lorna. You got to qualify your prospect. You're looking again for the hungry people who have a need and they believe that this business opportunity can meet their need. So all those cold market people, you got to build rapport with them so that you can find out what their need are, what their needs are, or find out what they do for a living and ask them if they're open to additional streams of income outside of that. Plain and simple. But this is not do me a favor, please, and look at my business. No, that makes you look desperate and weak. And nobody wants to partner with someone who they feel is weak. Because basically what you're saying, Lorna, is I have a business opportunity that's not that great, but I want you to take a look at it because you know me. What? We got the baddest opportunity on the planet. And if our opportunity is so strong, why is our posture so weak? You better walk like you found the cure to cancer and you can cure everybody. Listen, you working two jobs? I got something that can fix that. You got kids going to school? I got something that can fix that. You still paying rent? I got something to fix that if you want to buy a house. You, you taking public transportation? You need a new vehicle? I got something that can help you get that. Help find people to help and stop trying to find people to sell a travel agency to. Just that switch in your mindset will change what you're saying. Find people to help, not people who you want to sell a travel agency to. And that's the game changer. Any other questions before I let y'all go? Yeah, we went 27 minutes over. Any final question? Biggest takeaway. I want to get three people come off mute and tell me what your biggest takeaway from today's session was. Or you could type it in the chat. I love, I love the example you gave of not only your social media, but also of other um, partners, pages, because that visual was able to help me see and also hashtagging planet marketing, hashtagging business opportunity, mm -hmm. um, pulling people into your page, into your world. I'm not doing that. And so I need to go back now and hashtag some things on the posts I've made. Yes. Anytime you're, you're doing a business post, hashtag planet marketing. If you're doing a post about your travel agency, hashtag and teletravel. Um, if you're talking about that, you have a business opportunity, hashtag entrepreneurship, hashtag residual income, hashtag 1099, right? We get a 1099, hashtag 
lifetime freedom, hashtag personal freedom, hashtag financial freedom, hashtag legacy, hashtag generational wealth, hashtag leveraged income. Those are the hashtags um, that you could be using. Hashtag um, work from home business. Hashtag legitimate business. Those are ha all hashtags that you can use. Anybody else take away? That's gonna operate in your changing. operate in your future, not in your present. There you go. Operate in your future, not in your present. Good one. Anybody else? To continue going after the high hanging fruit that I was thinking wasn't the high hanging fruit, but they are the high hanging fruit. Not necessarily, um, you know, like um. Hungry. Entrepreneurs and also hungry people. And also I'm in vending groups, so I have an idea how to go for them because all of them love what they do. They love their products. But I never asked them if you were interested in making extra um supplements. What is it? Extra income? Additional, additional income. Additional. 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 That's the key word. Uh -huh. Additional. Uh -huh. We don't want people to think we're saying stop doing that business and come join me. No, if you're making money over there, keep doing that. But are you open to additional streams of income? Just, just because you're making a few coins in your network marketing business doesn't mean that that's meeting your needs. There is a difference between supplemental income and life-changing income. We make supplemental income booking travel. We make life-changing income as Planet Marketing Rep selling the travel business. So also make that distinction too. I see too many people promoting the travel side of the business as it's going to create this generational wealth and leave. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. That is not residual. So if you're, if you're associating time freedom with being a travel agent, you're lying. Stop doing that. There is no time freedom with booking travel. Is there Michelle? Booking travel will put you in time debt. Real talk, especially in the beginning. And this would, we're talking about people who are new to partnering with you. If they just partner with you, ain't no time for it. It's going to be a good year of them consistently booking travel before they get fast at it. So don't sell them a dream that be, partner with me, become a travel agent so you can have time freedom. They're going to have anything but time freedom in the beginning. And so they're going to end up quitting. They're going to be like, oh, I joined this because I wanted time freedom. That's what your post said. But man, it's taken me two hours to put this quote together because I don't know what I'm doing yet. If it's not true, don't say it. But if you talk about, you know, you want to make some supplemental income in addition to your nine to five, booking travel is a great way to do that. Now you're being honest. But if you talk about time freedom, personal freedom, leaving a legacy, you better be talking about planet marketing. Don't, that's what I'm talking about, the bait and switch. You showing the palm trees and all of that. You talking about book and travel, but we know that that's not going to provide that for them, especially as a new business partner. One more takeaway from anybody and then I'm going to let y'all go. I feel my takeaway would be to develop the maturity in the business is to learn the script and actually execute. Yes. Good one, Lorna. And again, the scripts just give you the concept of how the conversation should go. You have to personalize it so that you don't sound like a robot and you're spamming people. It's a real honest conversation. If you just focus on how can I help this person you will always say the right thing and it will never sound scripted. All right. All right. So that is it for tonight. I will be in Tampa. So if you have any guests um, that are in that Tampa market, just text me, get them to that meeting. I'll be happy to make sure your guests get all their questions answered. And then next Monday, I will be in Orlando at the Orlando meeting. So Orlando's first and third Mondays. And Tampa is second and fourth Thursday of the month. So I'll be back on coffee break next Tuesday. Y'all have an amazing one. Thanks. Love y'all. Bye. Love y'all. Peace.